To the human eye, there appears to be a glowing, three-dimensional butterfly moving around inside this black box. In fact, all it is, is a tiny polystyrene bead. Oh, that's really small. <laughs> yeah, it's like a one millimeter, two millimeter bead. It's suspended and uh, we can move it so fast to create a 3D shape. This is a volumetric display. It's an image that exists in real 3D space. And this latest development in the field is unique in that it uses sound waves not only to create the image, but also to add audio and tactile sensations. Oh, yeah, you can feel it's like a really, oh, like a kind of gentle buzz or breeze. My name's Lizzie Gibney, and I've come to the University of Sussex in the UK to see that display for myself. The most surprising thing about it is that it doesn't look like a flat projection. You can see that it's really floating there in three dimensions. And in person, the image doesn't flicker like it does on camera. People don't believe it, and then there's this magical uh, moment where they go like, wow, that's real. The display works by a process called acoustic levitation. In the walls of this box are arrays of speakers producing sound waves. So by using the ultrasound, creating a standing wave and this small, tiny small bead, the speakers create areas of high pressure that can trap a polystyrene bead and suspend it in midair. Moving the bead around and shining a light on it creates a glowing, moving dot. Move that dot around fast enough and you can create shapes in the air. Uh, what we've created is an um, acoustophoretic volumetric display. So we basically use sound to trap um, um, a lightweight object uh, in free space and we can update its position at very high update rates, so fast that persistence of vision happens and you think it's a full object. The team was inspired by research published last year from Brigham Young University. The American group had successfully created a volumetric display by steering tiny particles of cellulose using laser light. They were trapping a particle with lasers and doing something very similar and for us, to be honest, uh, we were not even thinking that that could be a possibility, you know, but we looked at each other and said, like, you think we can do that? We were like, I don't know, let's try. The team at the University of Sussex has been working on using sound waves to move small objects or create sensations for a few years. But the big challenge in creating a volumetric display was to get the beads moving fast enough that it appears as a single, non-moving image. To see as an image for human eyes, the whole parts, for example, like a, if you want to create a circle, this circle should be scanned in uh, 100 milliseconds, something like that. So the beads should be moved so fast to cre create this path in 100 milliseconds. But actually that's not the end of it, right? So because we are updating at that speed, uh, we can also uh, create audio and tactile feedback, so the object is singing uh, as it's moving uh, because, uh, and at the same time if you bring your hand close to it you will get a sensation of touch. The researchers can use the same waves of pressure that control the bead to create ripples in the air, fluttering on a finger to give a tactile experience. That's something that no other kind of volumetric display can do. We create a, a focusing point to another place for tactile feedback. So it's like a levitation, tactile, levitation, tactile, so we can switch so quickly. But it's so fast. Yes. We, you don't see it when you're watching. Mm -hmm. You don't hear it. It does make you feel like you're getting closer to something. Something real. Like batting wings or something. And by using the interactions between ultrasound waves, the display can even produce audible sound. Five. At the moment, the display can only create small, simple shapes. But if the team can get their beads moving even faster, or can manipulate multiple beads, they could create bigger and more complex images. And the team hopes that this could be the start of 3D displays becoming part of everyday life. The idea of just 
3D content to be something that's there. You go, you use it whenever you need to use it. You don't need to use it, you don't. Or I need to be seeing that 3D content, but also my notes. Or just check what time it is, you know? Like blending that virtual content in our real day-to-day -day life just in a seamless manner, it's something that's very valuable. This is literally our first step. We've got a long way to go, but the interesting bit is that the fundamentals that are underpinning this kind of displays, they are strong. They can really deliver all of this, and I think that's very good.